<laughs> Did Duff Cameron predict the live action reboot in 2013? And people are like, what the f is happening? What disappointed the fans the most about the new storyline? I need adventure! The answer is no, Buttercup! And will him be portrayed by Lil Nas X? Next. Hi, I'm Janet, and today we unveil everything we know about the Powerpuff Girls live action and why it might have been a mistake. Let's dive into it. Sugar, spice, and everything new. This year, the original animation celebrated its 23rd anniversary, and what better way to honor the original show than to make another installment of it? In August 2020, Variety dropped some shocker news about the Powerpuff series in development. A live action format. God, why was everyone's reaction? The announcement clearly did not thrill its loyal fan base. After the release of Fate, The Winx Saga, Riverdale, and The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, the CW Network thought, why work on a new storyline if you can revive an already successful gig? Ugh, they totally took that The Show Must Go On song literally. Many fans totally disapproved of the whole concept from day one. In their defense, though, after the poor execution of the previous sequels and anime reboots, the showrunners kinda had it coming. How can you make the series good when the whole show's greatness was earned by its absurdity, which was achieved through its animation format? The showrunners clearly saw the advantage of more complex stories through the live action, but we'll talk more about their storyline later. Let's have a closer look at the cast. The power trio is no longer the same. Somebody actually said that if the characters had fingers and hands, they are not Powerpuff Girls. Valid point, mate. And unfortunately, I'm here to disappoint you. Say bye to abnormally large eyes and animated hands. After the CW found its three leads, the filming began in the beginning of April in Georgia. Welcome New Blossom, portrayed by Chloe Bennett, Dove Cameron as Bubbles, and music artist Yana Perold in the role of Buttercup. Do you think if I tweet about it enough, I can get a part on a big deal production as well? Because for some people, it actually works. Believe it or not, Dove Cameron totally manifested her lead role eight years ago when she tweeted, I really just want to play Bubbles in a live-action Powerpuff Girls movie. Say no more, said the casting directors. The bubbly, sweet, and innocent image Dove has made for herself in the industry definitely helped her land a role in the new installment. The actress could not keep quiet when she got the news, saying, I'm so excited. I grew up without cable, and I even knew what the Powerpuff Girls were. I'm a freak for them. From the looks of it, the 25-year-old actress was born ready, with Bubbles' iconic pigtails totally fitting into the vibe of the cute character. Growing up on the set of Disney as the lead actress for The Live and Maddie Show, and then taking on the role of the main villain in the action franchise Descendants, prepared Cameron for the role. Playing a goody-goody? Done that. Battle sequences and saving the world? Big checks as well. Fans could not believe it when they realized Dove was actually going to fulfill her childhood dream. Fun fact! Dove and Chloe both acted in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as enemies, but this time they'll be fighting on the same side together. The fans were quick to back up Cameron's casting, posting the backstage pictures of the actress captioned, I'll watch hashtag Powerpuff Girls for the plot. Meanwhile, for 25-year-old Yana Peralt, previously a Broadway actress set to star in Hamilton and a music producer, it is her screen debut. For her role, the actress is wearing a short and wavy bob wig, which puts a little tweak on the original appearance of the Powerpuff Girl. And you will be the judge of that. Finally, Chloe Bennett is playing quick-witted and outgoing Blossom. The actress is 28 and is well known for her role of Sky in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the ABC drama Nashville. Now, a moment of silence please for Blossom's iconic red locks that the directors clearly could not get in time for the shoot. What was the reason? reason. What was the I reason? Just explain. I just explained the reason. What? Is it the fault of the production's low-budget effort? Recent TMZ footage revealed the new trio on set, and from the looks of it, the trademark colors and dresses remain, unlike everything else in the plot. But more about that later. A round of applause for the fairly accurate outfits of knee-high socks and a black belt around the waist, which left some loyal fans unimpressed. One diehard fan was clearly not feeling the vibe of the reboot outfit, saying, This is why y'all need to leave cartoons as cartoons, because this looks absolutely ridiculous. Three grown-ass women flying around in slip dresses and penny loafers. Preach! Some people did not hold back saying it is disappointing that the CW's budget couldn't afford to splurge a little more to get the pieces that would actually scream action and superhero. 
No sign of any super cool outerwear over here, though. Should we expect the stunts to do all the eye-captivating work instead? The leaked on-set footage showed Chloe Bennett being skyrocketed in the air in a simple pink dress with a giant bow in her hair as she performed her stunt. To be perfectly honest, the battle sequences are all we are looking for. And if those aren't done well? Since the animation was packed with fighting scenes, the live action has to live up to the standards set in the original installment. Will CGI do it justice? It better! Another point of note is that the Powerpuff Girls is known for its Japanese animation style, which made it so freaking great to watch. Hence, the question is, how exactly will the series reflect the initial color scheme and editing on screen? What about the rest of the cast? Some things remain unchanged no matter what. The Powerpuff Girls' father and creator, Professor Utonium, and the narrator are back in the game. The show truly carries the nostalgic value. And what else can a true fan wish for but to have Tom Kenny himself reprise his role? And boy, did he have quite a few in the show. In addition to voicing the narrator, Kenny voiced the mayor, Snake, and several other characters throughout the series. And for those who don't think they know him, he is the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants on Nickelodeon's hit TV show. Meanwhile, Professor Utonium is portrayed by actor Donald Faison, who is no stranger to wearing white robes after playing a doctor in the comedy sitcom Scrubs for almost a decade. Kudos to the casting directors for acknowledging the diversity of the talent pool in Hollywood and making the cast stand out from the original white character-based animation. And did anyone forget Miss Sarah Bellum? The highly intelligent and surprisingly silly Bellum will be played by Robin Lively. Lively is known for her extensive filmography, which includes Twin Peaks, The Karate Kid Part 3, and the late 80s film Teen Witch. There is a chance the actress will bring a new dimension to the series. Shall we expect more entangled romances? Let's just keep our fingers crossed that Ms. Bellum finally wins her long-awaited Nobel Prize for all the shush inventions she's made so far. Although, don't get your hopes too high yet. The plotline of the new series is not exactly a reflection of the original show. Plotline to be a flop? And it all went downhill when the series' synopsis was revealed. The premise revealed the show is about to do a massive time jump into the future, where the Powerpuff Girls are long done with their kindergarten fun and are now in their 20s, navigating life and holding grudges against their father. Well, that came out of nowhere. Or did it? Isn't it basically the whole plot of the Umbrella Academy? The directors clearly intend on giving us a new perspective on the story, but some fans are not really appreciating the deep dive into daddy issues. Unlike the quite successful animation sequels that did not receive critical acclaim, the series' showrunners decided to avoid the mistake of adding new characters and follow a safer route. What happens to our favorite trio when they grow up? The answer is… reality hits them hard. The disillusioned 20-somethings, as stated in the premise, resent their father for stripping away their childhood and being given only one trope to follow, the crime-fighting one. Yada, yada, yada. The new series is all about a bittersweet family reunion, when the world needs them more than ever. The Reddit feed was raging over the setting, with many die-hard fans questioning if the CW network can do justice, pun intended, to the iconic show. The channel is known for so, and I repeat, so many shows that, frankly speaking, went a bit on the typecast side, with some mediocre plot lines and almost non-existent character development. We won't point fingers here. The backlash ranged from criticism of the character's trauma to the sloppy relationship drama overshadowing the superhero bit. From the looks of it, the series might be solely about the legendary trio finding out their real identities. Another year with another live action about social issues and the superhero just being reduced to a single scene. Bubbles is all about claiming her fame back and has very little interest in saving the world, while Blossom has been traumatized by her past high performance standard and is now struggling with anxiety while trying to earn her top spot again. Meanwhile, rebellious and badass Buttercup has completely lost her tough exterior, disowned her Powerpuff Girl identity, and is living an anonymous life. On top of that, Professor Utonium is a complete wreck, spiraling into a midlife crisis and finding a new goal to repair his relationships with his now adult daughters. Phew, that's a lot to process. Not much of the original hilarious, quirky, and at times, ridiculous original series remains, and fans are right to be livid. That being said, the showrunners had no intention of creating a direct sequel, but rather bringing a new perspective to the show. Let's just hope that it is not another dark, gloomy Riverdale crime mystery. Let's keep it light, please. Will the villains return? And the juiciest bit of the series might be even the most anticipated part of the show, the villains. Now this is truly the most confusing bit of the live action, spurring many opinions across the platforms. The question is, is it even feasible to recreate Mojo Jojo? And apparently, the answer is yes. This year, another big reveal came around. The new addition to the series is Nicholas Padani as the main supervillain monkey and Ted Artagonist. 
the actor is a big deal himself. The 24-year-old Juilliard graduate had previously portrayed Albus Potter in the Broadway production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and appeared in Netflix's Archive 81. Now, exactly how the CW Network will recreate the iconic character remains a dark secret to this day. Will Nicholas be able to match the original mojo? What we've all been waiting for is the return of him, though. Some fans took matters into their own hands and offered their own candidate, Lil Nas X, to join the leads in the reunion. One Twitter user wrote, Dear people in charge of casting the CW's Powerpuff Girls, you have one correct choice when it comes to casting him, and I suggest you bite the bullet and pay whatever he asks. I mean, just imagine the trio of girls in dresses and bows against a massive talking gorilla battling little Nas pirouetting with a pole. Epic? I would say so. Now, let us know in the comments below, what do you think about the upcoming series? Which character are you looking forward to seeing the most? Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, thanks for keeping up with the catcher!